everybody, this is Brianna Rutter, and I am going to show you how I achieve goddess box braids on my very own hair, step by step for beginners. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and click the bell for notifications to see more hair tutorials from me. Now let's get started. To achieve this look, you're going to be using common styling tools and products that you already use when doing a variety of styles on your hair. So really quick, I'm gonna show you some of the supplies that you're going to need to achieve these goddess box braids. The number one most important product that you will need is super nail glue as you see here because this is going to make the ends of your braids look perfect. Now these curls are kind of in between a water wave type of look or a Brazilian curly type of look. It was a perfect type of texture curl that I needed to achieve this style. In order for this style to last me, I wanted to make sure that it was actually synthetic hair so that way the curls wouldn't fall. To achieve this look, you're also going to need Konecalon braiding hair and I used about two packs of braiding hair to achieve my style. Now I'm just combing out my hair in preparation for these braids and if you want me to do a hair update, just let me know down below in the comment section. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually separating a little bit of braiding hair from my package and I'm tying it into one big knot so it does not get tangled as I'm working on my hair. Throughout this tutorial, I'm going to show you multiple techniques on how to achieve this look. So that way you can see which method is going to best apply for the style or look that you're going for. So now for this style, I'm going to be parting my hair in triangle partings. Triangle partings are a little bit more difficult to parting your hair the normal way in boxes. And if you want a tutorial on that, I can definitely show you a detailed tutorial. So let me know in the comments if you want a detailed tutorial on how to part. So to begin, we're going to begin braiding the hair. And as you can see, I already split it into two pieces. So now as I'm braiding and I loose my hand again, I'm then gonna grab the other portion of my real hair. So my real hair is split into two as I've just shown you, but I have two sections of my real hair and two separate legs. So one of the legs of this braid has none of my real hair, but the other two of the legs has my real hair in it. I decided to start braiding my hair this way because it made the braids last a lot longer for me and it helps a lot to preventing your braids from slipping. So now we're gonna begin adding our curly pieces of hair. Now I'm showing you two different techniques here, so be sure to pay careful attention to each one to see which one best fits for you. So first, after I prepare the hair, I'm now going to lay it against my braid. Now as you can see here, I'm putting it in the middle portion and on the side, and I'm just literally braiding as normal. The way that you place your hair on your braid is gonna help you with overlapping it. So you wanna place them next to each other. Now I'm gonna grab a little bit of the hair and I'm gonna move it to the side. This is one of the pieces that I added. So I move that to the side or I use a clip to clip it against my braid so that it doesn't feed back into my box braid. So now I'm gonna release the second piece of my curly hair and I'm releasing it on the same side of the braid. Now I like to do this at the very back of my head because it prevents it from looking a little too bulky in the back. Also when I'm in the back, I like to grab smaller pieces of curly braiding hair so that way it's not super full and hot near my neck. So now that I've braided a little bit of ways down, I'm doing the same thing once again so that you can see. Also, I'm making sure to do very minimal editing in this tutorial so that way you don't miss anything and you can easily see every little detail of what I'm doing. So if you enjoy this method of me actually editing, let me know in the comments and I'll keep doing it. Now as you can see, I'm pointing to show you where the length of the curl ends because that's where you're going to add your piece. That's how I like to measure where to add my curly pieces, especially when I'm doing the very back of my head. So now, as you can tell, I'm getting ready to cut the ends and I'm cutting it down at an angle. So that way when the braid naturally ends, it doesn't have a sharp point. That way I can easily cut off the remaining pieces without it being too bulky. So that's how long I want my braids to be in the back. So I suggest that you leave the hair extensions as its normal length when you pull it out. So that way you can cut it up and customize how you want the lengths to look in the back meaning the braiding hair and the curly hair. Also, you can pull on the curly hair so that you can alternate the links. I like to alternate the links of the curly hair in the back because it helps me to stack the curls in a more natural feathered way as you can see here. Now, after I've almost braided to the ends, I put one drop of the actual glue on there and then I kind of roll it into my two fingers, my thumb and my index. Once it dry, I then take my scissors and I trim off all the excess braiding hair, the actual Konecalon hair only. And as you can see, it has left behind that curly piece. 
So now that's how just two braids look in the back with my triangle parting method. And let me know if you want me to show you how to do the style in different colors because I would absolutely love to do that. But I like to do my styles in mostly black hair. So now I'm going to show you the second way on how you can actually braid your goddess braid when at the very top of your head. I like to make the top of my head a little bit more full with curly hair. So that's why I had to slightly change the technique. Also, I cut the packs of hair in half so that I can already have a predetermined length for all of my braids at the front of my head. So if you want to customize the length of your braids, then I highly suggest that you leave the Kamekalon braiding hair very long so that way you can do that. Now I'm just showing you how I put the hair into my fingers so that I can begin braiding. This is the same way I prep the braiding hair in my hands when I'm doing individual box braids as well as coral braids. So now I've split my hair in two just like I did at the very back and now I'm braiding one of the pieces. Then after I braid about four times, I grab the other leg and I add it to one of the legs of my braiding hair. So just like I did at the back, only my real hair is in two legs. One of the legs of the braid does not have any of my real hair. So I braid down about two inches or so. Now you can choose to begin adding your curly pieces pretty much near the root of your hair if you wanted to, but I didn't want the roots of my hair to be a little bit too full. I wanted to start at about two inches down. With this style, you can customize it however you want. And there's so many different looks on this style because there's so many ways you can actually customize it. So now I'm beginning to add these curly pieces and I'm making sure that one side is a little bit unequal so that way I can have a natural tapered look of my curls just going down gradually. If you want your curls to kind of look thicker in certain areas, I suggest that you put the hair directly in the middle, meaning that both of the lengths of the curly pieces are the exact same length. I like to stagger my lengths so when I add it to the braid, one side is a little shorter than the other. So now I'm going to show you how I prep the short curly pieces of hair. I grab one ringlet and I cut it in half, equally in half. Now I separate small pieces of hair and I put a little bit of hair gel on my fingers so that way I can make the hair look a little bit more together so it doesn't look as loose or frizzy near the ends. The gel helps the curls to stay very in place. So now I just add it into that middle leg and the side leg as you see here and then I just continue to overlap one piece over the other. A really quick tip I want you to keep in mind is to make sure you braid about four to six times before you release one of the leg of your ringlets. That way it doesn't slide out of your braid. Also, I've been thinking about doing more beauty related content for you guys. So let me know down in the comments section what other types of videos you want to see from me. So now I'm gonna add my very last piece and I did not actually stagger the length. I just put it directly in the middle so that both sides of the curly piece is the same length. You're gonna alternate this throughout your head so that you can increase fullness or decrease fullness depending on where your braid is positioned. So if you love all these details that I'm sharing, give me a big thumbs up and let me know down in the comments. So you just put one drop of oil and then you can choose to twist it in your fingers as I did before or you could just simply blow on it or you can just wave it in the air because it dries super fast. So once it's dry you just grab your scissors and you cut off the remaining braiding hair so that way the ends of the braid will look very seamless making sure not to cut your curly ringlets just the connectalone braiding hair. So now I'm going to hold the braid behind my hand so you can clearly see how seamless that looks. And as you can tell, the style turned out beautiful. But wait, there's one more thing I gotta do with the ends of this hair, and that is to trim it up. It was just a little bit too long for my liking, plus the ends needed to just be cut a little bit higher so that I can get that fullness at the end that I wanted. So I'm just pulling on pieces of hair that are a little too long, and then I'm trimming it up. Also, I like to move all my hair to one side, and I like to trim it, and then I like to do the same thing on the other side to make sure that the ends are even. So now we're almost done and you're going to do the very back. Now when I'm cutting my actual fake hair, I don't need to use a mirror. I can just feel where it's at and I can just cut at a downward angle so that way there are no sharp lines at the bottom of the hair. So now I'm just going to move my braids around so that you can see my parting. Now ladies, I did not count my braids and I know some of you always write me, you never say how many braids are in your head. 
When I'm done braiding my hair, I do not think about counting all the braids that I have. But I would say normally when I do box braids, when I did count, it's anywhere between 100 braids to 150 braids. So keep that in mind. And as you can tell, I'm absolutely loving this style. So I want to thank y'all so much for watching me teach you how to do goddess box braids. Let me know in the comment section what hair tutorial you want next. Bye-bye.